Joining us now is former Gamecock tight end and Super Bowl champion Kyle Markway. Kyle, appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Gamecock community is very excited about this hire with Joe D. Camillus. I know you have the opportunity to work with him. He was your special teams coordinator with the L.A. Rams, especially during that Super Bowl year. What can you tell Gamecock fans about the coach that they just hired? I can tell them that they're in good hands. Um, as soon as I saw that tweet that you you know posted uh, a few days ago before the, the hire was even official, um, it just it got me super excited um, for Gamecock Nation uh, because I know um, how much how, how good of a fit it will be with Joe D and and Gamecock Nation. He's a he's a football coach that you know truly loves the game. Uh, he loves he loves football. He's got a ton of knowledge. And he's just going to bring a ton of, you know, of good stuff to to this program. What do you remember about whether it be meetings with him, how he is out there on the field, how he is with his players? I mean, these are things that obviously more internally are important. But naturally, this fan base is going to be interested to see what this guy's all about. Because I don't know how much you were following along with Pete Lembo and what he was able to do here in his three years. But Pete built a strong connection, not just with the players, but with the community. And a lot of that, of course, had to do with the success on the field from Lumbo. Yeah, what I can tell you from Joe D is, is he's going to be consistent with what he does every day. Um, as a special teams coordinator, you got to be able to connect with, you know, the offensive line, the defensive line, every single player. And, and Joe D makes, I think that was the biggest thing that stood out to me. Um, while being around him was the connections that he makes with the players um, on a personal level. He really shows how much he cares about you. And it's, it makes it easy to go out there and fight for him and, and take what he, he teaches you in the meeting room and, and go do it for him because, you know, he just, when he shows that he cares about you as a player, uh, it makes it that much easier to go out there and do it for the field on him, do it on the field with him. You know that when it comes to hirings, whether it be the head coach, whether it be an assistant coach, naturally the fan base, they're always going to try to nitpick different parts of someone's resume. I feel like with D. Camillus, the a good portion of this fan base looks at it and they're all saying the same thing, like, wow, this is a great hire, especially after losing someone like Lembo. But naturally they're going to try to find something. That something has been, well, he's been coaching in the NFL for over 30 years. How much does he... Uh, how, how impactful can he be as a recruiter? What would you tell people who are worried about that? I would tell them that, like I said, as a special teams coach, you need to be able to connect with everybody. Um, and looking at his resume, he's been in the NFL doing this for I don't know how many years, uh, a, a ton. And he's got two Super Bowl rings. Um, and I think if if you're not able to connect with somebody, then he wouldn't, you know, he wouldn't have been able to do what he's done. Um, and, and, you know, like I said before, that's the one thing that stood out to me was his ability to connect with, you know, not only the special teams captain, but guys who don't even, you know, play special teams or, or, or minimal part of special teams. He makes it, you know, a priority of his to, to build those relationships and to keep them and not to do it. And, you know, some fake and phony way, he, he truly means it. And, you know, I think that's why he's so good at what he does is he loves his job and loves to connect with these players. And I think he'll have no problem connecting with these, you know, these Gamecock fans and this, uh, you know, this place that loves football so much. And he's just two football people coming together. And it's and I think it's going to be great. Put yourself in a player's shoes right now, right? Let's say you're back at South Carolina right now. You're a sophomore. You had an opportunity to play for a Lumbo last year and you have this guy in there. That has, like you said, that extensive resume of being in the NFL. He brings in two Super Bowl rings as a special teams coordinator. We've seen over the last couple of years a handful of players make it to the next level, and they've credited the ability to be able to play special teams at South Carolina. You know that from your time at USC. How impactful can that be that he has done it in the NFL for such a long period of time, but he's also had success as far as those players in the room in terms of trying to earn that trust. I know he's going to go in there and he's going to do everything he can to earn the players trust, but being on the other side of it, how do you think the players will look at him right away? Uh, I mean, I think they'll look at him um, and, and I think they'll connect with him just like I did. Um, I was a practice squad guy who signed as a free agent, you know, and I didn't really have a role. Um, 
but I, you know, I made a priority to connect with, you know, special teams coach because I know how, how much that can help you, you know, build your career in the NFL. Uh, and I think that, you know, doing that and showing that you care and show up to work every day and just like he does, be consistent. Um, one thing in L.A. is, you know, we didn't have that much time to do special teams. Um, so I'm excited to see, you know, with Beamer and uh, how much he prioritized, you know, how much he focuses on special teams um, and allowing Jody to have that extra time. Um, I think the players and, and him will come up with some good stuff and, and put some good stuff on the field. I'm going to make both of us feel old here, but this will be coming up this year, five years since you last played at South Carolina. I remember covering <laughs> you when I first got down here in 2016 and covering your first couple. Of, I bring that up, though, because what have you been up to? We were talking before we hopped on here. I know you're tackling a, a new opportunity right now, but you, you hopped around a lot, but at the same time, too, you did something that, number one, not a lot of people can say they did, which is being able to play professional football. But number two, even fewer people can say you were part of a Super Bowl-winning team with the Rams. Yeah, and I give a lot of credit to, you know, um, South Carolina and Columbia for for setting me up so well, playing the SEC, playing in front of a great fan base like this. It gave me a lot of motivation to, you know, go on to the NFL and, and, and make everybody proud. Um, I was very fortunate to have, um, you know, two and a half, three years of experience in the NFL. Um, and like you said, I was part of that Super Bowl winning team, which a lot of people aren't able to do. So I'm very blessed and lucky um, to be able to achieve that. Um, I have I played in the USFL last year. Um, body kind of started breaking down on me. Just I put a lot of, you know, when I, when I play this game, I, I dedicate my whole life to it. Um, and it was just very hard on me to put all this work and time into it and for my body not to hold up and um, to be able to achieve everything I want to achieve, I decided to move on and pursue a, a family business in construction along with getting my real estate license in Illinois and um, hopefully Missouri here soon. So I'm excited to take everything I learned with football and, and you know, use that in the real world and to grow this family business and to um, keep doing good things in this world and hopefully make Game Talk Nation proud, even though it's not football. I got to ask you, because I asked Elshon this, we did an interview with Elshon Jeffrey about a year ago, actually probably on the eve or the day of the Super Bowl last year. And I asked him, I said, where do you keep the ring? I know that's probably a question that you get asked a good bit, but where do you keep the ring? I keep it my right now. It's in my, I was staying at my parents' house. So it's downstairs in the big old safe. I probably haven't seen it in eight months. You know, I rarely take it out. I keep it down there hidden. Uh, I actually just got a safe at my house. I'm hoping to move it over here so I can, you know, take it out every once in a while. I'll just look at it. You know, it's just fun to just look at sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> last thing, last thing I'll ask. Well, two two of your old teammates, Javon Killon and Debo Samuel, will be looking to do that too. They obviously are representing South Carolina Super Bowl next week, so we'll have to wait and see how they do. Last thing I'll ask you: What has it been like watching from afar? I mean, you've obviously went through some ups and downs in terms of teams at South Carolina. It's natural, right? I mean, that's that comes with playing the game, and you know that better than anyone playing it at the highest level. I say that because. When you look at what South Carolina has done in three years, I know you didn't play for Shane Beamer, but you know he's been able to do some good things. And again, as a former player, what is that like watching from afar from what he's been able to accomplish, especially knowing how difficult it is? No, it's 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 awesome. Um, the program has come so far, and the the thing I notice um, watching is just how much fun these guys have, and how much these guys love and care for each other. Um, that's, that's such a big part of, you know, having fun and, and winning football. And, you know, some of the, my favorite things to see is guys like, you know, Xavier Leggett and guys like Darius, Darius Rush who had these slow starts, like they're a freshman or, you know, younger guys when I was there, but they stuck it out. They didn't transfer. They didn't move on. They stuck it out and they just grinded and, and improved under this coaching staff. And that just shows, um, that, that Gamecock Nation is in good hands with this coaching staff and they can develop. And if you just stick it through and, you know, stay consistent and good things will happen. Can I hit on one more thing with you before we wrap up? You bring that up. You bring that up. And obviously, again, this is going to make both of us feel like, you know, we're the old guys in the room here. 
But you mentioned those two players in particular. I mean, two great stories. Darius, of course, he's with the Steelers right now. Xavier Leggett having a, a phenomenal day as we tape this on Wednesday. Had a phenomenal day at the Senior Bowl practice. College football's changed a lot since you last played. Mm-hmm. I mean, NIL, Portal, all that. But I say that because there's a lot of talented players that are coming in. They're going to be trying to wait their turn. What would you tell players like that that are going through the process? Because, I mean, those are two prime examples of guys who, you know, again, obviously the era is different. Xavier could have done it. But, you know, guys are going to have opportunities to go elsewhere. But what would you tell college football players, especially the guys at South Carolina, in yeah. terms of just, you know, pushing through it and and going through that process? I would say um, – my one of the biggest things that have came out from playing at South Carolina is the friendships that I've created. Um, and you don't create those friendships and those bonds in you know a year, two years. It's it's going through those three, four years of, of grind and, and and hard work and blood and sweat and tears with these guys that that these friendships that you'll build will last you know way way past your college career and um, and just you know stick through it. Uh, put your head down. Um, there's going to be things in life that come up, but you can't just run away from them. You got to go, you know, head on and, and, and believe in yourself and, you know, good things will happen. Well, Kyle, again, we appreciate you hopping on and so many Gamecock fans, I'm sure after hearing you today, talk about Joe D. Camillus, they're going to even be more excited. We're going to share this with uh, our Gamecock fans on Thursday, but a reminder to the folks that are just listening to this, Joe D. Camillus will be introduced as the special teams coordinator slash associate head coach on Friday with Shane Beamer. Kyle, again, thank you for hopping on with us. Yeah, I appreciate it, Mike.